Um, let's talk a little bit about using Excel to help you solve binomial uh, distribution problems. I've just got a, a quick problem here that says an increasing number of consumers believe they have to look out for themselves. So we have a survey conducted for USA Weekly where 60% of all consumers have called an 800 or 900 telephone number for information and we have a random sampling of 25 customers. So first question I want is what is the probability that 15 or more of these consumers have called an 800 or 900 telephone number for information about some product? All right, so I'm going to come up here. I'm just going to highlight, just put my cursor in a cell. I'm going to come up here to insert function, and I'm going to click. Now, I, mine always seems to be set on this, but you can get here a couple of ways. One, you can come down to this scroll down menu and select statistical and then hit go. It will give you all of the statistical functions that are built into Excel. And what I want to solve for is a binomial distribution. And so once I have B-I-N-O-M, D-I-S-T, binomial distribution highlighted, I'm simply going to come down here and say OK. What it'll do is it will pop up this great looking um, dialog box. And it's going to ask you for everything that you need. So it kind of steps you through exactly what you need to know. First thing is number of successes in the trial. All right, so let's take a look and see. Probability of 15 or more. So that means it's going to be 15 up to 25. So, what you're going to end up doing is for an or more, put in 14. Back it off one. I'm going to explain to you in a second why. Trials is easy. Trials is the number of independent trials, which is always our sample size. In this case, 25. Probability. It's the probability of success. Problem said 60% have called, so probability of success is 0 0.60. Now it's going to ask for a logic value. There are only two answers here, true or false. True is when we're looking for a range for the probability of a variety. So 15 or more means 15, 16, 17, 18 on up to 25 are all success are all the probabilities we're looking for only use false when the question says exactly only use false when the problem says exactly or the probability that three the probability that two the probability that nine so if it says more than or fewer than at least or at most, your answer here will always be true. What we're going to do is we're going to click OK. And it gives us a number here of 4.4414225. You think carries it out a million decimal places. And the question is now, what does that number represent? Well, the way that Excel works is it gives you cumulative probabilities. So what that actually equals to is that equals to the probability whoops, that between 0 and 14 said yes. Well, what we're asking for is what's the probability that Oops, sorry. What's the probability that 15 or more said yes? I gotta get rid of that equal sign. It thinks it's a formula. So what's the probability that 15 or more? Well, the probability that between 0 and 15 said yes is 0.414. 
So the problem, so the other half of that question is the probability that between 15 and 25 said yes has got to be 1 minus 0 0.414225, which is 0 0.585775. Because if you all didn't learn anything else out of the probability chapter, you learned that the sum of all probabilities for any given event must always equal 1. So, that's the way that I solved for number 1. So, for number 2, the question says, what's the probability that more than 20? Well, more than 20 means what I'm looking for is the probability, whoops, not much of a typist this morning, that between, really not a typist today, 21, because it says more than 20, so I don't want 20, I want the probability that between 21 and 25 said yes. So, what will Excel solve for me? It will solve for me, pro solve the probability that 20 or less said yes. And the way that it's going to solve for it is it's going, we're going to go up to insert function. Here I'm just going to show you how you can do it by just typing this in, B-I-N-O-M-D-I-S-T. See, it pops up right there. I'm going to say OK. It's asking me the same question. What number am I looking for? I'm looking for 20 out of my 25 trials with a 0 .60 probability. And remember, I'm not looking for exact. Since I'm not looking for exact, I'm looking for true, T-R-U-E. So what it tells me is the probability that 20 or less said yes is 0.990529. What do I know? I know that this plus this has to equal 1. So if I want to back that out, if I don't want to have to do it with my calculator, I'm going to type equals sum, and I'm going to say 1 minus that number, close parentheses, enter, is 0 .009. That's the probability that between 21 and 25 said yes. All right, let's keep rolling with this one. Number three, what is the probability that fewer than 10, okay? Fewer than 10. Remember what I said? Excel solves for. It solves for the x value down to zero. Down to zero. So see what we have here is I want to know probability that fewer than 10 said yes. Well, what number is fewer? What number starts fewer than 10, it means that I'm looking for the probability that 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, or 0 said yes. And this right here is exactly what Excel solves for. So. I'm going to come back here up to my function. See, now here's the other way you can do it. Now that I've done three of these in a row, you'll always see that the most recently used is always going to be on top. So I can just make sure binom dist, sounds weird, is highlighted. I'm going to hit OK. There's my dialog box. So what did I just say the number I'm solving for is? Probability that fewer than 10. So I want to start with... 9. I want to know 9 down. I've got my 
25 trials I'm still working with, still the same 60% probability, and I'm still not solving for a single value, so my answer here is still true. I'm going to hit OK, and it's going to tell me that the probability that fewer than 10 said yes is 0 0.013169. So, I don't need to subtract it because since I'm looking for a fewer probability, that's what Excel gives me. What I have to do is I have to subtract when it says more than. All right, so now I'm going to go to the very last one. The very last one says, what is the probability that exactly three? All right, here's our new one. Probability that exactly three said yes. All right, I'm going to come back over here to my box. I'm going to come back up to function. I'm going to select binome dist. I'm going to say OK. Now I'm looking for the probability exactly three. So I'm going to say three out of my 25 trials with my 60% probability and Finally, we get to use the word false, because false is an exact number. It's an exact number. So the probability that exactly three said no is... <coughs> is this funky looking number that you guys get, and I always get a question about this. I get emails that say, Professor Williams, I got this weird number that says E minus something. What I'm going to do is I'm going to right click onto that cell. I'm going to come down here. You all probably can't see where I've gone, but I've gone to format cells. And what I've done is I'm going to a number. And look what happens is I'm going to start increasing the number of decimal places. All right. What that negative 0 .07 is telling me is it's the exponent to the negative 7. So see how many decimal places I have to go out before I get a number? It simply means that there are a whole lot of leading zeros. I think that 7 to be exact. So I'm going to say OK. And now what I find is that the probability that exactly 3 say yes is this infinitesimal little number. If you go to the chart in the back of your textbook, you'll see that the chart actually tells you that the probability is 0 .0000. Remember, those numbers in the chart are simply rounded to four decimal places. Well, if I take this number, go back to format, and I go down to four decimal places, bingo, same thing that's in the chart. What Excel will do is it will calculate probabilities that are much smaller than the ones we actually work with in your textbook. So you could have done one of two things. You could have rounded the four decimal places and shown me point zero 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 zero, not telling me that the probability is zero, meaning impossible, meaning it's just a really small number, or if you had used Excel, you could have gone to your format, you could have gone up to seven or eight decimal places, said OK, and told me that that was your probability. Either one is absolutely acceptable. Um, it's kind of a, an easier or a quicker way sometimes than using the charts. Um, certainly better than using the formula, and I hope that this helped, and if you need more help, let me know.